My name is Martin Hogan and I'm a lead professional nurse advocate at Central London Community Healthcare and my role is to strategically implement um, the rollout of the professional nurse advocate to the organisation. So I do a lot of recruitment, so sometimes I sound like a car salesman, so I'm trying to put nurses on to a master's level module to get trained up to deliver restorative clinical supervision, quality improvement and career development as well. Um, but then also I've got to work with the divisions, work with the nursing workforce um, to help help strategically implement this and embed this um, as part of safer staffing, patient safety, um, to improve uh, our patient and staff safety as well. As a nurse, from being, you know, my conception as a healthcare assistant or a student nurse, I knew that what I was meant to do was to protect and look after the community in which I serve. But I, I didn't necessarily know that was called patient safety. I just thought that was me doing my job. And over the last 22 years of my career, my interest has become more and more um, conceptualised because I know what difference, you know, having best practice, safe practice can mean to the community in which we serve, to the families that we support as well. And and when things have gone horribly wrong um, nationally, the damage that that does, not only to the person involved, but to the reputation of the profession and to our wonderful organisations as well. So I guess my answer would be I've always been involved, I've always been passionate about it in one form or another. A uh, professional nurse advocate, or a PNA, as I'll say um, from now on, because uh, it's easier. Um, it, this is something that NHS England have brought in um, into midwifery first, and now it's into uh, nursing. And it's midwives or nurses who have been trained at master's level module to deliver um, supervision and a quality improvement. So this would be on top or alongside their current clinical role or, or senior role. And it's giving people or giving the workforce tools enabled to help restore the workforce. So post COVID, the conditions in which we've all been working have been, you know, increasing moral injury, burnout, retention. So this is sort of the medicine that's being administered to help recover and support um, the midw midwifery workforce and the nursing workforce. And it's, you know, it's not just a piece of paper that we say we do, we actually walk the walk and talk the talk. And that's massively making a difference. We've got really innovative systems to help improve well-being and, and mental health. We're training, we're doing lots of education and training and teaching people to become mental health first aiders and health and well-being champions and professional nurse advocates. So there's a huge buy-in that actually, you know, if we look after our own, you know, will only help improve things for everybody. And the patients I talk to, they always say to me, oh, Martin, your job sounds so interesting because we don't want a burnt out nursing workforce. We want our, our workforce to be at the top of their game because we'll need them when in our vulnerable moments, we'll need the experts to be OK because we, when we're not OK. So it's that chain reaction of, you know, it's like a happy marriage. I think staff and patient safety, you can't have one without the other. And it's so if one is broken and, and burnt down, then that is only going to impact the other as well and you know supervision isn't the cure for everything of course but it is giving people that space to really, really reflect reflect on their practice reflect on what they need and what and giving them the support to make things better for them i think i find the most fulfilling is when I can, I know that I'm making a difference to improve safety as an umbrella term. So I'm focusing on improving safety for staff by delivering supervision, by having those challenging conversations where people are unwell with moral injury or burnout or wanting to leave. I'm making a difference by creating a psychologically safe space for them to explore those emotions and the impact that then has on the patients. So, you know, my saying that I say all the time now, you can't pour from an empty cup um, and people are pouring from empty cups so in able to restore the workforce to then improve their patient care and patient safety as well. It's probably a national thing. It's waiting times, delays in, in being able to access services. So therefore people's symptoms are exacerbating or people aren't coming into A&E because there's, there's a long wait. And that's, I think that's probably a worry for us all nationally that people 
I don't think, or I don't want to bother at A&E, or I don't want to bother my GP, or I can't get in to see my GP. So they're not getting the services and therefore the treatment that they need. So I think time and, and capacity is probably the, the two biggest ones at the forefront of my mind. Um, and, you know, thinking about my own experience of using, uh, utilising services, the delay in waiting times means that I'm left unwell for longer. And by the time it gets to my appointment or to access a service, I might think, do you know what? I'm not engaged now because actually I've got over the hump or, or or the difficult bit and maybe I won't engage in the future so then for my personal safety that's you know a bit of a challenge and I think something that's rem you know resonates throughout the whole um, of our country as well I think a massive reduction in uh, serious incidents and errors and things like that, I think, I feel like it's going to happen because the focus is now not just on one area. We're looking at the whole elephant, so to speak, not just the trunk. So with those kind of meta-analytical overview of patient safety, we now have a better understanding of it. So I really do think we're going to see a reduction in serious incidents. We also have the support in place for people um, now if they are experiencing or having gone through anything like that. So there's a lot of innovative things coming out that's being borrowed by other countries around, around the world as well. So I think, you know, we'll see a lot of improvement and therefore hopefully a lot of reduction in, in uh, safety issues or serious incidents. One thing that it would be is to improve the retention of the workforce or to improve recruitment. So I know we've got 40,000 uh, vacancies nationally for nurses. So if I could magic up 40,000 40, nurses, I think that would dramatically improve uh, uh, patient safety. And, and, you know, making the profession, I guess that one A, my second bit of that, would be improving the conditions for, for the workforce as well. I'm a bit of a sort of healthcare professional geek, I think, I'm, uh, well, outside of work at least. Um, so I I'm now do a lot of blogs for the Patient Safety Learning Hub because that is really reflective practice and actually really fun to do as well and really helps me create um, and improve my, my practice. Um, I run uh, forums and things for staff. So we put on learning and education and it's just as, uh, giving you an additional space to talk about how you are. So nurturing the workforce as well, which therefore helps helps improve patient safety um, and yeah I sort of I guess it's having the for me it's the focus is always on that the more you look after people the better everything will be um, and that helps so whether it's putting on a forum or writing a blog education and nurturing I think are the my most critical most important things I do outside of, of work but therefore help improve my practice as a leader and therefore patient safety. One thing about myself that might surprise us, uh, I can be shy. People are always surprised that I can be shy sometimes. <laughs>